Welcome to our lecture online and here we can see a very practical use for the phasor diagram. What happens when we put both the current and the voltage on the same diagram? Well, it really tells us what is going on in the circuit. For example, if we draw something that looks like this, you can see that the current and the voltage are at the exact same phase. So therefore we say that the current and voltage are in phase and that means that they reach the maximum value and the minimum value at the very same time. They don't have to have the same value. Notice again that voltage is in volts, current is in amps, and so it doesn't really matter what we mean by the length of these particular vectors. They just simply represent the amplitude of the current and the voltage. And we could have made the voltage larger and the current smaller in, in size. It doesn't really make any difference. So what's really important is their relative phase, where they're at in time as a function of time, for example. And you can see that uh, this is, of course, called omega t. This is the phase. This is the the uh, indication of where in their phase that they're at and you can see that they're both pointing in the same direction so therefore we say they're in phase. In this particular case notice that the voltage is ahead of the current. How do we know they're ahead? Well let's say that you're you're standing at a particular location right here this is kind of like the finish line and you're, you're looking at the voltage and the current coming towards you, who's going to get there first? And of course, they're going to keep that same angle between the two as they're rotating around like this. And so you can see that the voltage will reach that line before the current, so we can say that the voltage leads the current. That's how we look at a phasor diagram. We know that those phasors are going to be rotating around in a counterclockwise direction, so whatever comes there first, that's leading. So we can say that the voltage is leading the current, or we can say that the current is lagging the voltage, so the, the current lags the voltage. And here, if we draw that on a simple sine or cosine uh, kind of um, function, you can see that the voltage reaches the maximum value before the current reaches the maximum value because time moves to the right. So voltage first, current next, so therefore voltage leads to current. On the third phase of the diagram, we can see that as they're rotating around, that the current will get to this point before the voltage, so therefore the current leads the voltage. And if we draw it like this, we can see that the current reaches the maximum value first and then the voltage next. And there's the phase difference between them. And so you can say that the phase difference between them can be found by simply finding this angle between the two right there. That's called the phase difference between the current and the voltage. And that's why it's so interesting to look at phasor diagrams. Now, what does that tell us? In an RCL circuit, if we have something that looks like this, where the, both the voltage and the current are in phase, that means that the inductor and the capacitor cancel each other out, and it's a, a net result is as if there's only a resistor in the circuit. That's usually done when we reach what we call the, the resonant frequency. Okay, we have a situation where the voltage leads the current. What's happening in the circuit? Well, we know that the inductor holds back the current, and so the voltage builds up across the inductor before the current builds up across the inductor. So we know that in a circuit like this, the inductor plays a predominant role in the circuit. On the other hand, if we see that the current leads the voltage, that means the capacitor plays a predominant role in the circuit because the capacitor allows the current to flow before the voltage builds up across the capacitor. And so you can see then that in the third case, we have a capacitor dominated circuit. In the second case here, when the voltage leads the current, we have an inductor dominating circuit. And when we have them both in the same phase, that means that the inductor and the capacitor oppose the current in the same amount of time and they tend to cancel each other out. We will see why in, in a few more videos. And therefore we can see there that in a case like this, they don't either play a role, they kind of annihilate each other, or cancel each other out. I shouldn't say annihilate, but cancel each other out so that it basically becomes a resistor dominated circuit at that point. And we'll see more details of that later. But at least now you get a feel of why we use uh, phasor diagrams and how useful they can be in showing us what is happening in the circuit based upon where the phase is relative to the voltage relative to the current. And that's how we do that.